Hi everyone, I have a different kind of video for you today. I wasn't really planning on filming today. I have a lot of schoolwork that I need to finish, but I got this message and I wanted to read it to you first and then I wanted to talk about it because I know that it's very possible that a lot of you are going through the same thing and personally this message, it just really hit me because this is exactly how I felt when I was in this person's shoes. I'm gonna read it to you and then we'll discuss. I'll skip over a few things, but I'll put the message um, right here in its entirety if you're interested in reading that. Hey, I need a little pep talk. I just finished my first year in mechanical engineering with a 4.04. I never ever worked so hard in my life every day. And I had a huge gap to fill. So I'm so proud that I passed, but still now I'm struggling so much with the knowledge that I'm basically the worst in my year. And I also only passed because of the huge help of my friends during the year and with bonus exercises that counted towards my final grade. I just feel like I'll never be good by myself. Now the new semester started and again, I need so much help. I would just live to be the one providing the help for once. And I'm always doing my best, but it's so tough to believe in myself right now because it was such a close call and everything. Maybe you have some advice on how to get better working independently. And then the message says, you know, I sometimes just wish I was a bit smarter. First of all, I feel, I just feel so much for any of you that are going through this because that was me. This was me. So let's backtrack a little bit. What has my educational journey been like? I feel like a lot of people might look at me or someone like me and think that I've just been a straight A student all my life and have just been getting award after award after award and achieving and achieving and that I don't fail and that I get perfect scores. No, that is not the truth. So when I was in elementary school, I moved to the US and I was about seven years old. I did not know any English at all. I had a lot to make up and I was really scared of having to repeat a grade so I worked really really hard to learn the language. That was my priority and um, I also just loved school. I didn't want to fall behind. I worked so hard. I didn't fall behind. I didn't have to repeat a grade and I was able to continue. Now. Was I a perfect student? No, I mean, I didn't get perfect, perfect grades, but I did get pretty good high grades on average in elementary school. But now we get to middle school. And like many other girls, I started to become just so overwhelmed with all of the different things going on around me and everything that the media was telling me that I wasn't pretty enough, that I wasn't good enough, that I wanted this or that I wanted that. And at the same time, I was battling a lot of insecurities with my own abilities. When I got to my middle school math class, I just struggled a lot. I did not do well at all. And I think I also had a lot of really bad habits that I was bringing in from elementary school because I was used to not really having to put in much of an effort um, and I would still get pretty good grades. But that just wasn't cutting it in middle school anymore. And instead of seeing that and thinking, well, maybe there's something that I need to do. Maybe I need to go back and relearn this or restudy this or whatever it may be. Instead, I started thinking, well, Maybe this whole time, I actually wasn't that good at this. I actually wasn't that good at math. I actually wasn't supposed to be doing this. Maybe it wasn't for me. And that idea continued. I still worked really hard because I knew that I wanted to try, but in the back of my mind, I thought I wasn't good enough for it. So now we get to high school and I get a C in my very first um, high school freshman math class. And again, that just reinforced my belief that this wasn't for me. I wasn't very good at this. Um, the people who were meant to be doing this were the people who were getting straight A's, were the people who every test they A's, were the people who were the ones helping me just try to stay afloat. And as the classes went on, I made it all the way up to calculus. I got an A in calculus. I was helping others. Um, I eventually did realize that I had 
uh, uh, issues, right, with the way that I was studying and just foundational problems that I did eventually start to fix, but I still didn't believe it. It was still in my head that it was me, that I wasn't good for this, that I wasn't smart enough. And then we fast forward a little bit more to community college. When I got to community college, I decided to do something a little drastic. <laughs> I started over in math completely. I completely started over. I went all the way down to trigonometry and then pre-calculus and then calculus, which is where I actually was. So I guess not completely over, but I did take three classes over in math because I felt like my foundations were not strong enough. And I thought, well, how am I gonna continue and use all of this super advanced math and then get a whole degree that is math-based and not be strong with these basics, these things that aren't going to be taught to me again. I'm just expected to know them and use them as tools. So I went back. I It took me a whole extra year. I did three years at community college because of this, as opposed to the two that it was supposed to take me, and that is okay. I don't regret this in any way. It was the best thing I could have ever done because you know what? Every single math class after that, I was the top of the class. Now, here's what changed for me. I went from thinking, I'm not smart enough, This, I'm not good enough, this isn't for me, to, oh, okay my skills were weak i went back i worked on them basically redid entire classes and now i'm at the top of my class for every math class that comes along and the only difference is that i went back and strengthened myself so it was never that i wasn't good enough it was never that i didn't belong it was that I had a weak foundation and I kept building on that weak foundation and so it was just the house was going to crumble eventually. That is what we need to remember sometimes when we think about our current situation and we just feel like we're not smart enough, we feel like we have to work harder, we feel like we just don't get it. But instead of feeling that way and thinking that, maybe what we need to do is look back at that foundation and figure out where exactly that foundation is not strong enough and where possibly you're trying to build on top of it but it's just crumbling underneath you so next time that you feel that way that you feel like you don't belong that you're not strong enough that you just aren't getting in remember that and remember that it's okay to go back a little. It's okay to pull out those old books, those old textbooks, sit yourself down for however long you need to get yourself to that point where you can now continue building. And that is what was able to get me to where I am today. Comparing ourselves to people who are already there, who have put in the work, or who took the time at the very beginning to make sure that those foundations were solid and are now building successfully, comparing ourselves to that success point is, is not beneficial in any way. I really, really hope that helps. And if you are going through this, remember you are not alone. We're here together with you. We've been there. We know what that's like. And we also know what it's like afterward. So keep going, find those weaknesses, work on them, and happy building. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you'll stick around and subscribe and I'll see you next time.